So I heard you want to become a flight attendant. Well, you are in the right place because in today's video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know when it comes to the process of becoming a flight attendant. But hello friends and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. My name is Kat and I am a flight attendant with a major US airline. I've been a flight attendant now for six years. I did one year as a regional flight attendant and the other five have been with my current mainline airline. So I like to think I know a thing or two about becoming a flight attendant and I'm going to share that knowledge with you guys today. But very quickly before we get into that, I do want to take just a quick moment to thank today's sponsor. So I just wanted to thank glassesusa.com for sponsoring this part of today's video. If you guys do not know, glassesusa.com is one of the largest eyewear retailers in the United States, offering thousands of different eyewear and sunglass options from brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, Fendi, Gucci, Prada, and so many more. They even have in-house brands like Muse and Amelia E. And what's best about glassesusa.com is that the glasses start at only $39 which are up to 70% off retail prices. And glassesusa.com also offers a collection of advanced blue light blocking glasses. So many of my glasses are prescription lenses as well as blue light blocking because using blue light glasses during screen time helps reduce eye strain, decrease headaches, improve your sleep, and increase productivity. And shopping online can be a lot of fun, but it can also be extremely overwhelming, especially with so many different options and styles to choose from, which is another reason I love glassesusa.com because they make it so easy with so many different tools to check out to help you out like the AR virtual try on. So there's no need to upload a static photo of yourself anymore. Your phone or desktop just requests access to your camera and there it will scan your face and fit the frames perfectly to your face, which is super cool. And another reason I love shopping with glassesusa.com is because they offer a risk-free shopping experience. So you can expect to get free shipping and returns as well as a 100% money back guarantee within 14 days of delivery. So if you want to check out any of these five amazing pairs of eyeglasses and sunglasses I have shown you today, or check out something that's gonna be a little bit more you and really personalized to you, be sure to click the links down below in the description box. Once again, thank you to glassesusa.com for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into it. So the first thing about becoming a flight attendant that you have to decide is what flight attendant am I gonna be? And this doesn't mean am I gonna be like a good flight attendant or a bad flight attendant. It more so means am I going to do corporate or also known as private aviation or would I rather do commercial, which is what I do. So they are very different worlds, but it's still kind of like cut from the same cloth. So you do a lot of similar things, especially when it comes to safety. When it comes to corporate or private aviation, a lot of times you are servicing fewer people, but at a much higher scale. So basically you're expected to usually grocery shop, to cook everything from scratch, to do the dishes and a lot more. Whereas when you are a commercial flight attendant, you are servicing far more people, but at a lesser scale. Usually the food is generally pre-cooked. You're just kind of warming it up in the oven. You're plating things. Kind of depends on what cabin you're gonna be in. Now, normally private flight attendants make a bit more money, but commercial flight attendants have flight benefits, like free flights and things like that, that private flight attendants don't generally have. Also, the scheduling is a bit different. So when you are a private flight attendant, Usually you can work for longer periods of time. You can be extended if needed. Normally, not always, but normally you're doing like two weeks on, two weeks off kind of thing. Whereas a commercial flight attendant, you have more control over your schedule, especially when you build some seniority in there. So scheduling gets a bit different. So you kind of got to research that and just decide which type of flight attendant would I prefer to be? So after deciding what kind of flight attendant you wanna be, whether that be corporate or commercial, the next thing you need to figure out is which airlines do you wanna apply for? Now, I would personally tell you to find a few. I think it's just nice to keep your options open because this career path can be so competitive. Do not get discouraged though, it's definitely doable, but there is a lot of competition and stuff that you gotta get through. So I would kind of like, pick a few that you really want to apply with that really align with what you are looking for. So a few factors that I would recommend that you consider when choosing your airline would be base options because this can completely change your quality of life. Some airlines don't allow you to commute and commuting is really hard and challenging anyways. So obviously you'll want to be able to move to base if at all possible because commuting is what I would consider to be a second job. It takes a lot of planning, a lot of stress, and a lot of time to 
get yourself from point A to point B to then be in position to actually work the flight. So definitely look into what base options that airlines have. Now keep in mind, an airline can get rid of bases and they can add bases in there. So just kind of know that in the back of your head, but still I would strongly consider you to look at their base options. Another thing I think is really important to look at are flight routes. Where does this airline fly to and are these places that I actually wanna go? Now this kind of dictates whether it is a regional airline or a mainline airline. So a lot of regional airlines just do domestic travel. So they'll do a lot of like US, Mexico, Canada, whereas a lot more mainline airlines do domestic as well as international travel. So you kind of got to decide like what's best for you. If y'all want a full breakdown of regional versus mainline, I can do that because there are a lot of differences between the two, some good, some bad for both. So it really just depends on what you are looking for, but definitely look and see what flight routes do they take? Are these places that I want to lay over? Are these places that I want to fly to? These are things to consider. Another thing you should look at is unions. Is a union important to you? For some people, it's strongly important, like it was for me. For some people, they don't really care as much. So you should definitely look and see, does the airline have a union? So another thing that I would personally say is very important to look into and figure out what is best for you is the reserve schedule because airlines can do different reserve. You might have a straight reserve system where you are gonna be on reserve until you can hold it off. And depending on the base that you're at, some of them are gonna be more junior, some of them are gonna be more senior. So you can be on reserve for a long period of time, which if you don't know what reserve is, it's basically like you're the on-call shift. So you can kind of bid and it can kind of vary day to day, but at the end of the day, you don't know what trips you're flying. It's basically crew scheduling, assigning, whatever it is to you. Whereas a line holder, you know what trips you have. You have a little bit more control over your schedule to add, drop, move, things like that than a reserve does. Some airlines do a rotational reserve where you might serve reserve one month and then be off the next. And other airlines might not have reserve at all. You might just have a couple days in the month that those are kind of like your reserve days that you're gonna be working until basically you can hold it off. Another thing that I think you should consider is seniority. How fast can you climb that tree? Because seniority is king at an airline. So how quickly can you actually put some seniority on? Obviously, if you're gonna be at a regional airline, you can really get up there quickly. Whereas if you are with a mainline airline, it really can take you a minute and also kind of depends on the base that you're gonna be based at. A couple other things that you might wanna look into that you'll, you'll know more so when you actually go into the interview setting, but that would be like company policies, company culture, and things like that. So once you've kind of sorted through all of the fluff, you've picked a direction, you have your handful of airlines that you want to apply to, the next step in the process is actually applying. Now, this is fairly easy, but can be just a little complicated only because most airlines only open for a very short period of time. So many airlines only open maybe once or twice in a year, and it can be anywhere from like one day to a week to two weeks to a month, but it's not open for very long at all. So I would personally tell you to go find some flight attendants that work for that specific airline that you are looking for and kind of wait and see when they post that their airline's gonna be hiring. Most flight attendants will post like, hey, on Monday, our airline's gonna be accepting applications. So I would recommend you just find a handful of them that work for that airline and wait for them to post. But once the application process is open, now is your time to shine. So you're gonna go ahead and submit your updated resume or CV. It's usually fairly easy, maybe a cover letter in there. So when it comes to your resume, some tips I will give you is definitely lead with your customer service foot forward. Customer service is so important in this job. Like you need to remember this. This is something you should strongly remember. When it comes to being a flight attendant, safety is number one. It is the most important thing about your job. But number two is customer service. We do a lot of customer service and you want to be making that airline look good. Now safety is something they're going to teach you in training. Whereas customer service, you either got it or you don't. You're good with people or you're not. Keep it precise. Keep it to the point. Keep it professional. If you're not sure how to build a resume, definitely check out some YouTube videos on doing it. Also use a template so that way it just it looks really nice. Everything's organized. Doesn't need to be very lengthy. And then you'll go ahead and submit that resume. Now after you've actually sent in your application, some airlines will send you a questionnaire. This can be right away. It might be a few days later, but the questionnaire is going to be pretty simple and to the point. Do not overthink the questions. It's basically just asking you things that they expect you to know that are going to make you a great fit to become a flight attendant. There are things like being on time, customer service things. Again, don't overthink it. It's not hard. You know, it's not challenging. It's not meant to be. They're not trying to trick you or trip you up. It's only just meant to 
make sure that you and your personality are a good fit for the airline as you're taking it just think of you already as a flight attendant and how you would answer those questions so after doing that if you get the chance to move forward in the interview process it's going to kind of vary depending on the airline and how they do it i'm going to give you a couple scenarios of what you might see so the next step might be that you have a virtual interview or it might be that you have an on phone interview so when doing this they're going to ask you questions that are more like kind of scenario questions usually, like if this happened, what would you do? There's a lot of great stuff and great interview questions that you might see that other people on YouTube have covered. I know I have this video, it's it's definitely old, but these are questions that you might see in your interview process. So if you wanna brush up on those, I know there's stuff on Glassdoor that you might wanna see. So just try to like Google some things ahead of time of, of interview questions that you might see just to prepare yourself. So when it comes to your virtual interview, obviously, a appearance matters. I would say keep it simple, keep it professional. Don't do anything too too out of the ordinary. I would say less is more. Now, obviously, I'm a I'm a more is more girl. If you can't tell, more is more for me. But when I'm doing an interview, I'm gonna dial it back. You obviously want to gear yourself towards what you're trying to achieve here. So I would say, like, if you're a girl, keep your makeup like in that like clean girl aesthetic kind of thing. Keep it natural, keep it beautiful. I would still say and encourage you to wear some makeup just to kind of brighten up. Obviously, these are just my tips. You can take it or leave it. If your hair can be pulled back, I would say pull your hair back. I would keep your outfit very business professional. I know I get asked a lot, should I wear a scarf? I personally would tell you it's not necessary. You don't need it. I would just say look very business professional. Dress for the job that you are actually applying for. If you're a man, keep yourself well groomed. For everybody, keep your nails. Keep your nails professional. Don't do anything outlandish. Don't do anything crazy. You just want to keep it simple. You know, have have good posture, be confident, be strong in what you're saying, try to breathe and relax, put a little bit of your personality in there, but also just keep it professional. And then after that, when you move forward, usually you're gonna have a face-to-face -face interview. They will usually fly you out to wherever they're gonna have the interview process. And here they're kind of looking to see like, how are you interacting with other people? Because as a flight attendant, you need to be a leader, but also a team worker. You want to still be present and be involved but not outshine people. Definitely compliment people, but don't railroad them, step all over them. When you go into your face-to-face -face interview, the same rules apply. Look professional, look your best. If your hair can be pulled back, pull it back. Keep your makeup on point, keep your nails on point. You know, keep the jewelry to a, a minimum. And here you'd want to smile, 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 smile. Your cheeks should be burning. They are watching you the entire time. I don't care if you go into the bathroom, there should be a big old smile on your face. It should be like, the happiest potty break you have ever taken. Make friends there. I still have friends that like I met at interviews. Be sure to socialize, but also remember what you're there for. You're there to get the job, be confident, you know, be your best self. Try to call people by their names if they give you their names because that's stuff they're gonna be looking for on the line. And again, remember, safety first. Safety, safety, safety is your most important part of the job. Customer service is number two. I think that's so important for all the questions they're gonna be asking you. And usually there will be questions there. So a lot of times you'll do like a group activity, then they'll pull you aside and ask you like some questions that you wanna do, whether it's in a group or just by yourself one-on-one. -on -one. Now after this, if you move on, this is when training is coming. Now I would definitely tell you, save some money because mass majority of airlines do not pay for training. And training can be anywhere from like three and a half weeks to six weeks. And then also you've got to still go to the job and work sometimes before collecting a paycheck. So I think it's so important to save some money ahead of time. Now training is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a time that you're gonna meet some lifelong friends, but do not forget what you are there for. Make sure you study, make sure you're staying focused. It's a lot of information in a very short period of time. You're gonna basically be learning all the parts of the plane, where the safety equipment is, the number of seats, the type of like, whether there's like first class, business, main cabin. You're gonna be learning a lot of safety information, a lot of safety scenarios. And trust me, they do a good job. You know, you're gonna get on the line and something's gonna happen and it's gonna be a scenario that they taught you in training and it's just gonna be second nature. They're gonna be so good at what they do. It'll be second nature that you're gonna jump right into action and know what you're doing. Like they've got this down to a science, I promise you. Make sure 
sure you're having fun, but but don't forget, you're at a job. That's it. You're you're literally at a job, so make sure you're still representing yourself to the best of your ability the entire time you are there. So while you're in training, usually it's towards the end, you will get your base assignments. Now, it can vary airline to airline on how this actually works, but usually it goes that they already know that for each base, this is the number of flight attendants that we need there. Some bases may not be available, so keep that in mind, but you can always transfer, so don't worry too much. But usually they'll say, okay, we need six people up in DC, we need five people in Chicago, we need three people in LA, or, or whatever it is. And then based on seniority, which obviously if you're at training, nobody really has seniority yet, so it goes based off age. Everybody will make a sheet with their preferences that this is my first pick, this is my second pick, this is my third pick on what base options that you would want. Again, keep in mind where that base flies because different bases have different routes. Some bases may be international, some bases may not, some bases may be really junior, so you can get a line quicker, you can build seniority quicker, some bases are a bit more senior. It really, there's so many things to look at, but you'll put your bases in order, and then based on how many people they need at each base, we'll kind of give you your assignment. This is such an exciting time. If you don't get your first choice, it's fine. I've known so many people who got base options they did not want. Last choices, and then they never left. They stayed there because it ended up being an amazing base. This is the time where they want to see that palm tree thing. They always say like flight attendants need to be a palm tree. You need to be able to blow and move with the things, which is 100% true, 100% true. This job is gonna, it's gonna move you. It's gonna be a palm tree in a hurricane sometimes. So just be ready for that. But just keep in mind, keep it fun. It's fine. If you don't get your first choice, you can always transfer, but sometimes people fall in love with bases they never knew. But after you finish training, this is the time you will actually go to your base assignment. So you are finally on the line you are going to be the junior baby everybody's going to love you you're up there boosting people's seniority you've got a fresh smile on you're like brand new we can we can spot you all from a mile away and we love it we love junior flight attendants you're going to go to your base option they're going to give you some kind of reserve schedule of what you're going to do and then this is where you're going to kind of learn as you go now they've taught you everything service wise during training but also you're just going to realize that some stuff you're really going to learn on the line and every base does things a little bit different here or there stay flexible and listen to your senior mamas and papas you know don't break any FARs which are your federal aviation regulations like make sure you're doing safety hundred percent exactly how they taught you in training but as far as like service be a little bit flexible just listen they're gonna help you out it's okay you're gonna be doing everything for the first time you might mess up here or there it's gonna be fine but this is like really when the fun begins now I would also tell you do not quit before six months is up because this job is gonna test you in ways you didn't know. You're just starting out. You're not gonna get the best trips. You're gonna have an irregular sleep schedule. This job, you spend a lot of time on your own, which you don't realize, but you might get a little bit of loneliness. And some of the, the things that you know a lot of people try to just cover up that they don't exist, but they do in this world, they might happen and they might affect you. So it's gonna get better. I promise you it will get better. So just stick with it. Do not give up before that six month period is over. You're also probably gonna be on probation. So make sure you are minding your P's and Q's. You're showing up on time. You look dressed to the nines, to the gods. You look fire. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Sorry, you guys, the camera battery died. So I try to I try to put you back where, where you kind of were. But another thing you might be wondering about is flight attendant pay. So the pay scale for a flight attendant works way different from a normal nine to five. I have a full video right here that I will link down in the description box that you guys can check out where I really go into like the nitty gritty, all the details. Just be kind to me because that video is old. I'm not even looking at the camera. It's one of my OG videos. I'll have a couple more like some for training, interview questions, like things I think will be good resources for you guys. But just remember, these are videos I made at the very wee beginning of this humble channel. So some of them are not gonna be great, but the information will be on point, I promise you. But flight attendant pay usually works with flight time. So usually we start getting paid when the boarding door is closed after like everybody's on the plane, after boarding's complete, and then for the flight to get wherever you need to go. Flight attendants also make something called per diem. So per diem isn't very much money. It's usually like $1.50 to $2. Um, and that's for every hour that you are away from base. So let's say that you have a layover and it's 15 hours. You're going to be making those 15 hours you're away from base in per diem. So per diem kind of helps cover food costs because flight attendants have to pay for our own food. Food is not provided, although the hotels 
are provided. I get asked that all the time. It's probably the most popular question I get asked is do flight attendants pay for their hotels? No, we do not. The airline picks and pays for the hotels and usually it's in your contract based on like where they can put you or not put you. And then usually as a flight attendant, every year that you stay with the company, you'll get like a raise and sometimes you get big jumps, sometimes it's little jumps until you hit the pay cap. So I know at my airline, once you hit about 13 years, that's your pay ceiling. It's not going anymore after that. There's also a little bit extras here and there. Like if you work an international flight, you'll get paid international pay, which is usually a couple bucks more. If you work the galley, you might get a little bit more galley pay, which is like a dollar or something more. If you work a purser, you have to be purser qualified. But if you work a purser position, let's say to Paris, France, I think that's like $7 an hour or more. I mean, that, that one's a big jump, but you have to be qualified. You have to be able to bid for it. And usually that comes with some seniority. So don't, don't worry too much about that. You'll learn that more on the line. And then lead flight attendant pay, which is usually like a couple bucks more. So, you know, you don't think it's a lot, but if you fly lead all month long, that can really add up. But again, if y'all want more of a breakdown, like more like into the nitty gritty of pay, definitely check that video down in my description box out. Another thing I would tell you to look at are airline policies. Like when it comes to tattoos. I have a bunch of tattoos and know your airline's policy and know what you signed up for. Usually airlines say no visible tattoos. You can have tattoos, but they need to be covered completely when you are in uniform. Some airlines allow visible tattoos now, but normally it's just like something small. Like normally if they do allow visible tattoos, it's like a plane deck or smaller. So if you've got a lot like me, like a lot, a lot like me, just be ready. If you agree to cover them up, you have to cover them up. And if you go into the interview process and they ask you about tattoos, I know a lot of people get worried about this one, but if they ask you, just say, yes, I have tattoos, but they will never be visible in uniform. Form. That's your golden phrase right there because they don't mind you having them. They don't want to see them So just remember that and just know like if you agree not to have them visible You cannot have them visible another thing I get asked a lot about is is there a height and weight requirement and normally for these things like height would be like more regional because the planes are so small that after you like pass a certain height they're like, okay, this might not be a good fit for you because you might be just too tall hitting your, hitting your head on the way down. So you'd be more of a mainline flight attendant. Um, I know for mainline, I'm only five foot. So I'm very short, but there isn't a, a too short or too tall. It's usually a reach test. So normally when you go in for your interview, they'll put, I don't know, let's say a fire hydrant or something in an overhead bin and you have to be able to reach it. So that's usually how you pass the height test. And for the weight test, there's no more like I'm going to step on the scale and we are going to weigh you like how it used to be back in the day. But there is something that you have to be able to buckle the seatbelt without an extender. So you have to be able to sit in the jump seat and completely fasten your seatbelt without needing an extension. So that's the common height and weight test. They also might make you walk through an emergency window exit as well. And last but not least, I want to throw this in here just so you guys are aware because I don't think a lot of people know this, but after you become a flight attendant and you come onto the line, there's also other things that you can do. Like a lot of times an airline will have like special projects. They might have training positions that might open for you where you can become a training instructor. They might have um, like flight service managers or some kind of other management positions that you might want to do. So there's definitely still ways to grow and to move around if that's something you're interested in. But if there's anything in this video that I didn't answer and you have a question for me, go ahead and ask down below. I will try to answer as many as I possibly can. And if you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up up, press that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.